Good morning, everyone. Welcome to story time today. Story time is pre-recorded today because it is Memorial Day. So um, I am not going live for that time, but I wanted to have a story time ready for you guys anyways because I said it would be here on Monday. So um, I just want to say hi real quick to most of my regulars that come in here. And if I miss you, I'm so, so sorry. I still want to say good morning to you anyways. But good morning to Miss Mara, Finley, Annalise and Owen, Noelle and Declan, good morning to Miss Mara, and to Camden and Mila, and to Allison, Cole, and Aubrey, and to Henry and Maverick, and to all of my wonderful storytime friends out there. I appreciate all of you so, so, so much, and I'm so happy that you are watching my video today. So let's, actually we have a friend joining us today. This is Mushu, so if you see him, he's my kitty. And he wanted to be in the video today, I guess. But let's go ahead and start with our usual hello song, okay? Ready? Let's do it together. Ready? We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With all our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. Yay! Great job, guys! So today, the first book we have in the pile is by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. It's How Do Dinosaurs Choose Their Pets? How does a dinosaur pick out his pet? Does he go on the prowl with a stick and a net? Does he head to the zoo and take home a big cat? What does his mom have to say about that? Does she drag a huge elephant back in a wagon with both its long trunk and its wee tail a dragon? And speaking of dragons, does she go acquire a high-flying beastie who loves to breathe fire? Or does she pick out a boa constrictor for play? And does it look in the like look at the dog in a very odd way? Or does he sneak in an iguana underneath his cap? Or lead a kangaroo home with a long strap? Or does he ask for a manatee, a whale, or wish for a shark that he can keep in a pail? Or does she carry off tortoises, zebra, a mink, giving them hay and cola to drink? Is that what you think? <laughs> no, a dinosaur doesn't. She knows what to do and she never brings anything home from the zoo. He goes to the shelter or a pet store or a farm and he finds a small creature that will do no harm. He brings home a kitten, a hamster, or a pup and he can teach them manners as they both grow up. She cares for her pet and gives love and even more. Big hugs to you and your friend, little dinosaur. The end. Oh, those silly dinosaurs are always doing something silly. Miss Kate's camera just seems like it's a little fuzzy here. Don't know if that's any better, but we'll try it. So the next book we have is Happy Birthday Moon, and this one is by Frank Oshk. One night, Bear looked up at the sky and thought, wouldn't it be nice to give the moon a birthday present? But Bear didn't know when the moon's birthday was, so, or what to get him. So he climbed to the tall tree to have a little chat with the moon. Hello, moon, he shouted, but the moon did not reply. Maybe I'm too far away, thought Bear. The moon cannot hear me. So Bear paddled across the river 
and he hiked through the forest and into the mountains. Now I am much closer to the moon, thought Bear, and he shouted again, Hello! And this time his own voice echoed off the mountains. Hello! Bear got very excited. Oh boy, he thought I'm talking to the moon. Tell me, asked Bear, when's your birthday? Tell me, when's your birthday, replied the moon. Well, it just so happens that my birthday is tomorrow, said Bear. Well, it just so happens my birthday is tomorrow, replied the moon. What do you want for your birthday, asked Bear. What do you want for your birthday, asked the moon. And Bear thought for a moment and he replied, I would like a hat. I would like a hat, said the moon. Oh, good, he thought Bear. I know what to get the moon for his birthday. Goodbye, said Bear. Goodbye, said the moon. And when Bear got home, he dumped all of the money out of his piggy bank. And then he went downtown and he bought the moon a beautiful hat. That night, he put it up in the tree where the moon could find it. And then he waited and watched while the moon slowly crept through the branches and tried the hat. Hooray, said Bear. It fits just right. During the night while Bear slept, the hat fell out of the tree. And in the morning, Bear found the hat on the ground at his doorstep. So the moon got me a hat too, exclaimed Bear, and he tried it, and it fit perfectly. But then the wind blew Bear's hat off his head, and he had to chase after it. But it got away, oh no. And that night, Bear paddled across the river, and he walked through the forest to talk to the moon. For a long time, the moon would not speak to him, so Bear spoke first. Hello, he shouted. Hello, replied the moon. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said Bear. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said the moon. That's okay, I still love you, said Bear. That's okay, I still love you, said the moon. Happy birthday, said Bear. And happy birthday, said the moon. The end. Bear's such a silly guy. Ready? The next book we are going to do is Knuffle Bunny. And this one's by Mo Willems. A cautionary tale by Mo Willems. Not so long ago, before she could even speak, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. There's Trixie, right there. Trixie and her daddy went down the block. They went through the park. And they went past the school, all the way and into the laundry mat. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry in the machine. Oh, she's such a good helper. She even got to put the money in them to the machine, and then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. And she turned to her dad and said, I'll go for a gobble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. So Trixie said again, Oggle, floggle, cadabble, bloggle, obble, woggle, flabby, slurp. Now please don't get fussy, said her daddy. But well, she had no choice. And Trixie bawled, and she went boneless. 
She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. And by the time they got home, her daddy was very unhappy too. And as soon as Trixie's mommy opened the door and she asked, where's Knuffle Bunny? So the whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park. They ran past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked all over for Knuffle Bunny and looked and looked and looked, but Knuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's daddy decided to look harder until <gasps> Knuffle Bunny screamed Trixie. <coughs> Excuse me. And those were the first words Trixie ever said. The end. It's always good to find your buddy again. How about we take a little sing-along break real quick? Does that sound like fun? Yeah? Let's go ahead and let's play our Itsy Bitsy Spider. All right, let's get our spiders out and you can have yours look however you'd like to. Ready? The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Yay! Great job, guys. Are you ready for another story? We're going to do Cat and Bunny next. And this one is by Mary Linguist. <clears throat> Cat and Bunny were born on the same day of the same month of the same year. Right from the start, they did everything together, just the two of them. They daydreamed together, they rode bikes together, and they had lunch together. And they went on lots of adventures together. Friends forever, said Bunny. Just us, said Cat. Cat and Bunny's favorite game was one that they made up called the Made Up Game. And they played it every day and only they knew the rules to it. Good move, said Cat. Your turn, said Bunny. Then one day Quail asked, can I play? And B Cat wasn't sure, but Bunny said, yes, of course. And soon all the children wanted to play and Bunny said, yes, of course, to each one. And Cat didn't say anything. Bunny was having too much fun to notice when Cat ran away. Oh no. Cat sat alone waiting for Bunny to find her, but Bunny didn't come. And then she heard a purr and a rustle. It was a kitten. She wasn't alone after all. And soon Cat was playing a new made-up game with a new friend. Can I play too? asked Giraffe. And Cat thought for a moment. Of course, she said. And once Cat showed Giraffe how to play the new made-up game, all the children asked if they could join in. And Cat said, of course, to each one. The last to come was Bunny. Can I play the new made-up game too? he asked. And Cat smiled and said, Of course! The end. Oh, they're so silly, Cat and Bunny. Ready? The next book we're going to do is Klondike Do Not Eat Those Cupcakes. Hello, Klondike. Those cupcakes look delicious, and yes, I know you love cupcakes a lot, but you heard your mother, no cupcakes until at your sister's party. Yes, Klondike, it's very hard to wait. Really, truly, very, extremely hard to wait. But you can do it, I believe in you, Klondike. 
No, Klondike, you can't have just one bite, not even a nibble. I saw that. Pretend that those cupcakes are squid sandwiches or tube worm tacos or curried crabs. You, uh. Oh, right. Seals love squid sandwiches, turb worm tacos, and curried carrots. My highly trained guard dog, Bruiser, will protect these cupcakes. That, that's very disappointing, Bruiser. He tricked you quickly. Look, Klondike, the magician is here for the party. Check out that there. It, there's nothing in his hat and nothing up his sleeve. Now watch closely as he pulls an arctic hair out of his hat. Hocus Pocus! Wow! Oh, bogus. Klondike, don't do this. Think about your sister pretty, please. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Oh, boy. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Oh, yikes. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Klondike, you ate the cupcakes. Don't even try to deny it. And we know the dog did not make you do it. Uh-oh, here comes your mother. Oh, and look at your poor sister. There will be no cupcakes at her party and no candles to blow out and no wishes to make. Unless, oh boy, now I have to see this. What are you going to do, Klondike? Oh, he's making more cupcakes. Nicely done, Klondike. You know you love your sister a lot. Oh, and you made me a treat, too? Oh, it's uh, very thoughtful of you. Hey, Klondike, it's finally party time. You know what that means? Eat up those cupcakes! Yay! <laughs> I feel the same way about cupcakes. <laughs> Ready? How about we do another sing-along? How about we play Wheels on the Bus together? Ready? Let's get our wheels going. Ready? The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. Swish, 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 the wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and shut. Open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus go open and shut all through the town. The driver on the bus says, move on back, move on back, move on back. The driver on the bus says, move on back all through the town. The Baby on the bus goes wee 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 wee. The baby on the bus goes wee 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 all through the town. The mommies on the bus go shh 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 shh. The mommies on the bus go shh 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 all through the town. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Yay! Great job, everybody. The next book we are going to do is The Kindness Book, and this one is by Todd Parr. What is kindness, you might ask? Kindness is thinking about people's feelings and helping them feel good. And kindness helps you feel good too. Kindness is reading a bedtime story to someone you love. Kindness is taking care of your community. 
and kindness is opening the door for someone. Kindness is listening and kindness is helping others stay safe. Kindness is free. Kindness is watching out for someone around you. And kindness is holding hands. Kindness is being there when somebody needs you. And kindness is taking care of yourself. Kindness is helping things to grow. And kindness is saying something nice. Kindness is not hurting someone's feelings, and kindness is knowing when to say sorry. Be kind to yourself. Kindness is remembering that everyone's feelings are important, and kindness is welcoming someone new to your family. Kindness is having a hug with a bug, and kindness is saying hello to someone new. Kindness is saying thank you to those that help others, and kindness is being nice to animals. Kindness is letting others be who they are, and kindness is cheering someone up when they're sad. It's easy to be kind. There are many ways to be kind. Don't forget to be kind to yourself. The end. Love, Todd. I love this book so much. He always has the nicest things to say. Ready? The next book we are going to do is a fan favorite. It's The Little Blue Truck by Alice Shirtle. The horn went beep and the engine purred the friendliest sounds that you've ever heard. The little blue truck came down the road. Beep, said Blue to the big green toad. The toad said, croak, and he winked an eye as the little blue truck went rolling on by. The sheep said, ba, and the cow said, moo. Oink, said the piggy, and beep, said Blue. Cluck, said the chick, and then her chick said, peep. Ma, said the goat, and Blue said, beep. Nay, said the horse, and quack, said the duck. Beep, said the friendly little blue truck. Honk, yelled the dump truck. Coming through, I've got big important things to do. I haven't got time to pass the day with every duck along the way. Room went the dump around the curve. He saw the puddle and he tried to swerve. And into the mud rolled the big fat truck and his big important wheels got stuck. His heavy-duty dump truck tires were stuck down deep in the muck and the mire. Honk! yelled the dump truck, and he sounded scared. Oh, excuse me. But nobody heard, and nobody cared. But then, into the mud, bump, 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 into came the little blue truck to help the dump. Little blue pushed with all his might, but now blue and the truck were both stuck tight. Help, 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 cried the little blue truck. Beep, 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 I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And everybody heard that beep, 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 and the cow came running with the pig and the sheep. And up at the gallop ran the big brown horse, and the goat jumped over the fence, of course, and hen came flapping with the chick and the duck, and everybody pushed the little blue truck. Head to head and rump to rump, they all pushed blue who pushed the truck. Dump. But they couldn't quite budge the heavy load when who popped up but the big green toad. All together, one, two, three, one last push and the trucks were free. Thanks, little brother, said the dump to Blue. You helped me and they helped you. Now I see a lot depends on a helping hand from a few good friends. Beep, said Blue, who wants a ride? And everybody scrambled and jumped inside. Oink, quack, ba, moo, cluck, peep, nay, croak, ma. And that last little beep, 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 the end. He's such a kind guy. Ready? Let's do one more sing-along break together. How about we do our five little duckies together? Ready? Let's count to five. One, two, three. 
two, three, four, five. Ready? Five little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 but only four little ducks came back. Four little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 but only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 but only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 but only one little duck came back. One little duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 but no little ducks came back. Sad mama duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 and all five little ducks came back. Yay! Great job, everyone. I'm sorry, Miss Kate has a case of the yawns today. Ready? Well, the next book we are going to do is Goodnight Moon. And this one is by Margaret Wise Brown. In a great green room, there was a telephone, a red balloon, and a picture of the cow jumping over the moon. And there were three little bears sitting in chairs. And there were two little kittens and a pair of mittens. And there was a little toy house and a young mouse. Oops, I skipped a page. There was a comb and a brush and a bowl full of mush. And there was a quiet old lady who was whispering, hush. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light. Good night, red balloon. Good night, bears. And good night, chairs. Good night, kittens. And good night, mittens. Good night, clocks. And good night, socks. Good night, toy house. And good night, little mouse. Good night, comb, and good night, brush. Good night, nobody. Good night, mush. Good night to the old lady whispering, hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. The end. Alrighty, everyone. That was our last book of the day today. So, we are going to sing If We're Happy and We Know It together. Does this sound like fun? Ready? Let's do it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three, Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! Yay! 
before we do our goodbye song, if you guys have any book requests you want me to try to get, go ahead and put those in the comments and I will do my best to grab those. I hope you are all having a wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend and let's go ahead and do our goodbye song. Ready? We clap goodbye like this. We clap goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We clap goodbye like this. We stomp goodbye like this. We stomp goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We stomp goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today, and I hope I will see you next time. Bye-bye.